afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm not a high-stakes poker player, never have been. I wish I had been. <laughs> um, my, my name is Martin Farrows. I'm the COO of Soapbox Labs, and we're based in Dublin, in Ireland, and um, we're very passionate about building the most accurate and accessible speech technology for kids. Um, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just describing the problem, and then I'm going to talk about our solution. Play digger digger. Lada, play digger digger. Bobby, can you talk to play wheels? You want to box? hear a station for porn detected? Porno ringtone. No. Hot chick amateur girl calling no. sexy. No, 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 no. Hot pussy oh. anal dildo ringtone. Alexa, stop. Girl. Okay, we've all been there, right? <laughs> um, so you can see, see what's happening here. There's a, you've got this three or four year old who's trying to engage with Alexa on, on an Amazon Echo Spot device. And, and what's actually happening here is that the child is getting, there's two things happening. One is that the experience the child is getting is not accurate, right? So Alexa is not understanding what they're saying. But secondly, it's not age appropriate nor safe for that child, right? So that experience that the child is getting is not appropriate for their age. And of course, this problem is not limited to um, Alexa. And in fact, Amazon have probably done more than anybody to actually ensure that voice interface is now mainstream alongside kind of Apple and Google. And here's a quote from David Limp, who says that, you know, kids today will grow up uh, never knowing a time when they couldn't talk to their houses. So there's no doubt that voice is becoming the dominant interface and it's going to replace uh, touch and gesture. The big problem here is that most commercial speech recognition systems are built using adult data and adult behaviors, right, which are very different to children. Children's voices are physiolo physiologically different, but also children behave very differently to adults in the way that they speak. They tend not to modify their behavior when they're, when they're, they're interacting with technology, for example. The other challenge that we have with voice is um, the limitations of the devices and the form factors. And, and most of us have experienced this kind of form factor, which is kind of a smart speaker. Um, we really have to challenge ourselves to think about what are the design implications of voice for children. In other words, what does it mean to design a really effective voice effect interface for a child? And, and always remembering that you know, a four-year-old is not half an eight-year-old, right? A four-year-old is very different, different behaviorally and cognitively than an eight-year-old. So we have to think very carefully about how we design a voice interface. And that's where Soapbox Labs comes in. We don't want children to have this kind of experience, right? Um, and that is not actually the early prototype of the Amazon Echo, um, although it would be kind of humorous to think that it would be. Um, <clears throat> so we don't want children to have this sort of reaction. What we want them to do, and, and what we want to ensure for children is to ex ensure that their experience is three things. We want to ensure that their experience is accurate, we want to ensure that their experience is age appropriate, and we want them to have a trusted and safe experience. So a little bit about us, um, back in 2013, uh, we recognized that the challenge around children's voice was going to be a data challenge. So as an AI company, we knew that we would be um, dependent on quality data in terms of building our models. So we, we set about creating one of the largest proprietary data sets of children's voices. Um, We've done that uh, ensuring that we comply with all data privacy, data protection concerns, particularly hot topic at the moment for anybody who's uh, following the media. Um, and we are, we're different in the way that um, we actually only use the data that we collect to build a better product, right? So we don't have a, a, a pervasive advertising business model or we don't use a profile, the kids. We simply use the data to build a better product. Um, we have privacy by design built into our platform. And over on the left there, you can see a very kind of over oversimplified version of how the platform works. Um, a, a voice sample gets sent to our servers. We've used deep learning techniques to be able to analyze that sample. And then we deliver some data back to our customer. We're a business to business. We're a B2B model. We have an API. And it's up to our customers then to think about, right, okay, well, how are we going to integrate the data that we get back from Soapbox Labs into our product? And that's the really interesting part about this, is that our customers then have to think very carefully about what it means to integrate voice interface into their product. There are a broad number of use cases. Another great thing about the technology, it's very flexible. You can use it to support a broad number of uh, uh, user um, experiences. 
um, from robotics through to gaming, through AR and VR, command control in games, but particularly in education and language learning, we're looking at areas, use cases such as pronunciation assessment, um, such as early childhood literacy, phonological awareness. So from three-year-olds right up through four, five, six, seven, and up to 12-year-olds. Once you get to 12-year-olds, you can pretty much use adult speech technology. Here's some information about the, the company and some progress. Um, here's some headlines, in fact, from the last three months. Um, we released our first product uh, four years uh, after starting the business in December 2017. That's our first public API. We have around 20 partners who are evaluating that API. Our business model is based on micropayments. It's a transactional model um, based on calls to the API itself. In terms of funding, we have raised just over $4 million to date. Um, the good news is that um, over half of that is non-dilutive, which is a great, great form of funding. Um, and we have been very successfully supported by the Irish government through an agency through, called Enterprise Ireland and also through the European Union through the Horizon 2020 program. This is us, a particularly good-looking group of people, I think you'll agree. Um, we have seven nationalities in our team. There are 12 of us in total, two people missing off that picture, um, and about six PhDs. So lots of deep IP uh, in the business. If you're interested in the product, then we will be downstairs along with everybody else uh, demonstrating it tomorrow in the GSV marketplace. Um, and you can contact us on the bottom there. Um, thank you for listening and thank you for not queuing to go and see John Legend. <laughs>